Is your Mac running a bit slow or do you just want to increase its performance? Well, you are watching the right video. The last video I did on this topic has almost a million views, so I've spent the last few days trawling through web articles, YouTube videos, and Apple support sites so I could put together the ultimate guide to increase the speed of your Mac or simply just to fix a slow Mac. Now, you've probably seen the length of this video and I hope it hasn't put you off because if you stick with me to the end, your Mac will be faster than a NASA supercomputer. Okay, maybe not quite that fast, but you get my point. Now, for those of you who'd prefer a written guide, I've detailed these steps and also a few extra bonus steps on the Created Labs website. Now, I recommend watching this YouTube video first in its entirety so you have an idea of the process. And then if you're still having issues, read the article to perform the bonus steps. The link to the article is in the description of this video. Now, none of these steps are very risky, but there is a small chance of an error occurring that may result in some data loss. So I always recommend to do a time machine backup before continuing on with these steps. If you do need help with performing a time machine backup, I have a handy video showing you how that you can click in the top right hand corner of this screen. So first things first, let's start with some quick fixes. Now these are some things that you can do, some very basic things that should hopefully give you a bit of a performance boost right off the bat. So the first one is simply just finding what is using up all the performance. So if we open up the spotlight search, now a cool shortcut for this is hold down command and press the space bar on the keyboard, or you can come up here to the top right hand corner and you can click the little icon. We're going to search for activity monitor and we're going to open this up. Now, if we go to the CPU tab in the activity monitor, this is going to give you a little bit more of an idea of what exactly is using up the CPU or the central processing unit. So as you can see right here, the screen capture program, that's how I'm recording this video, that's using 20% of the CPU. And then underneath that activity monitor, which is obviously this actual process is using 10%. So if you look down here at the system user and idle statistics, essentially what this means is system, that's gonna be some essential background processes that's running. So that's gonna be things like your kernels or the actual operating system. User, those are programs that we're running such as say sync, Photoshop, Chrome, or Firefox. And then idle, well, that's just the percentage remaining after these two are added together. So at the moment, it's sitting at about 86% idle, which is good. Now, if you notice that your idle is very low and either your system or your user percentages are very high, that means that you've potentially got some things running in the background that need to be closed. So the way to do that is to just sort by CPU percentage usage and then look at these top few ones. Now, if you notice you have a few programs running or a few background processes that maybe don't need to be there and they're not necessarily, you can shut them down, such as sync. That's essentially just running in the background. I don't need it. Now, sync in this particular example is only using a little bit of the CPU, so that's fine. But if it was using, say, 30 or 40%, for example, and you're not using sync actively, you can highlight it and click the stop button up here and that's going to end the process a quick thing to note is if you see things like kernel task or core audio or things like windows server don't shut them down they are important background processes you're just looking for the things like sync or chrome or other user install programs that you may have now if we move over to the memory tab Memory is essentially another name for your RAM, which is random access memory. So the example I always use to explain what the memory or the RAM does to people who aren't familiar with it is think of RAM like hands on a person. So the more hands you give a single person, the more tasks they can do at once. So if I have two hands, I can do two things at once. If I have eight hands, for example, I can do eight different things at once. That's a very simplified way of thinking of it, but that's the best example I can think of. Now this particular machine has eight gigabytes of RAM or memory, which means programs are able to utilize up to eight gigabytes. Now you can see down here, I have obviously eight gigabytes installed and I'm only using 4.13 gigabytes at the moment. 
So that's a pretty good utilization ratio. If you notice that say for example, you had eight gigabytes like me or 16 or 32 gigabytes and memory used is maxing that out. Again, you're gonna have to look up here at some of these tasks and try to figure out pretty much what is taking up that memory. Now, moving on to the next quick fix, and that is cloud services. So if you use things like Dropbox or Google Drive or Sync or any of those things just running in the background, generally you'll be able to see them up here. And you can see that me personally, I'm using Sync, which is essentially a more secured version of Dropbox. Now, these things on their own don't necessarily use up a lot of the processing power on your computer. But if you have a lot of these up in the corner running, Sometimes it's worthwhile to actually shut them down. Now it's usually very easy to do this. You either go into the app itself and shut it down or turn it off, or you can come up here, you can click on it and you can click on the settings and you can just quit that particular cloud service. The other quick fix, which a lot of people don't seem to realize is if you have a lot of items on your desktop, that's actually gonna slow down your entire computer. So say for example, if I have a bunch of screenshots on my desktop like this, Every time you go to the desktop, all of these screenshots and the little thumbnail preview images will have to load. And that uses system resources. So it's always a good idea to either just delete these screenshots or images or files completely, like so, drag them to the trash can, or sort them and place them inside files so that they're not on the desktop. Now the very last and probably the most important quick fix is actually just making sure your Mac OS operating system is as up to date as possible. So if we come up to the Apple logo in the top left hand corner, select that, click about this Mac, you wanna be checking the version number. So right now I'm on version 10.15.5, which is Mac OS Catalina. And I do believe I'm actually due for an update. So I'll click software update here. And you can see right off the bat, I'm actually two versions behind. So what I should most likely do is click update now and make sure I'm as up to date as possible. For those of you worried about corrupting your Mac or making it worse, again, try and do a time machine backup first. But at the end of the day, all the Apple software updates really do try to improve the performance of your computer. So there's actually very little risk of it making the issue worse. Now, moving on to cleaning and storage optimization. Again, this is also going to have a very big impact on the performance of your Mac. So if we come up back to about this Mac and then we click on storage and we'll just wait a moment until the Mac finishes calculating. So you can see that my particular MacBook is the 128 gigabyte version. And you can see at the moment I have 19.33 gigabytes available out of the total hard drive space. Now a good rule of thumb is to have at the very least 10 to 15% free space on the hard drive. So you can see here, I'm just reaching that. I wanna be at about 15 to 20 gigabytes. So at 19.3, that's pretty much spot on, but you definitely don't want to go anywhere lower than that. The reason for this is that hard drives need a little bit of free space just to do their thing. So they're constantly overriding old data, doing new data, cleaning up bits and pieces, and it needs free space to give it some breathing room to actually perform those services. Now, luckily, macOS has a really nifty tool to help you decrease the amount of clutter on your Mac. So if we just click manage here, this will give you a really handy tool and you can see I've actually already completed some of these steps. So store in iCloud, if you want, you can store some documents, files and photos, etc., in iCloud and that will actually remove it off your computer. I don't personally do that. Optimize storage, Mac will actually do that for you. So it'll delete some things you don't need such as Apple TV movies you've already watched. Empty bin automatically, pretty self-explanatory there. And then you can also come in here and reduce clutter. So this will actually let you manually review all of your files and delete large ones. So if we leave that there for a second, we'll continue down this list. Applications, again, it's gonna sort it from biggest size to smallest size. Now for me personally, I use Photoshop all the time, but I don't actually use PowerPoint very often. And you can see that's taking up over one and a half gigabytes. So if I wanted to, I could come in here and click delete, and that's gonna delete that application off my computer. So go through this list, any apps here that you aren't using or you haven't used for a while, delete them. If 
we go to the bin, that's just your recycle bin or the trash can for the Mac. You can empty that if you want. Documents, this is gonna give you a good idea of some of your biggest documents. So you can see down the right hand side here, it'll rank it from largest to smallest. So delete some stuff here that you're not using. Same with mail and also same with messages. You can come in here and delete large attachments. Now, if we come back to recommendations and go review files, again, that's just gonna take you to the documents tab. So there's not really any point in clicking that because you're just gonna to go to documents anyway and check it out. Now, once you've finished cleaning and optimizing the storage on your Mac, which as we mentioned before, involves deleting programs or files that you don't need, or also moving them off the Mac onto a USB or a hard drive, we're going to actually move on to web browsing. Now this can actually have a pretty decent effect on the speed of your Mac. And let's face it, 90% of the time when we're using our computer, it is for web browsing. So what we'll do first is we'll actually clear the history on our web browser. So if, for example, you're using Safari, we'll open up Safari first of all, and then we'll actually come up to the top left-hand corner here. We'll click on that and we'll click clear history and we're going to clear all history and just before you click this button just be aware that this isn't going to remove your favorites or anything like that it will delete your browsing history and it will also delete most likely your login details if you have it saved in safari so what that means is if you're signed into facebook for example it'll log you out and you'll just need to log back in again so we'll click clear history and you can also come in here and you can go preferences and we'll click on extensions. And if you have any extensions in Safari that you're not using, you can click on them and you can uninstall them or delete them. I'm personally using Bitwarden, so I'm going to leave that here. Quick tip, if you want to close out of programs quickly, you can hold the command key on the keyboard and then press the Q key and that will quit the program. Now, if you're a user of Chrome, we can also open up Chrome and it's essentially the exact same thing for Chrome. So I'll come up here to history, we'll go show full history and you can actually clear all of this browsing data. So we'll select all time and we'll select everything here. We'll clear all of that. And while we're actually on the topic of Chrome, Chrome isn't actually the best browser to use on a Mac. Believe it or not, it is actually Safari because Safari has been optimized for the Mac OS operating system. Chrome can be quite resource intensive, so it can actually use up a lot of the processing power on your Mac, which brings me to my next point. Don't open a whole lot of tabs. If you're the kind of person that has like 15 to 20 tabs open, that is absolutely going to limit the performance of your Mac. So you can either install an extension that will pause or suspend those tabs when you're not using it. So you have two options. Number one, obviously, you can just close those tabs down if you're not using it, or you can install an extension that will actually suspend or pause those tabs while you're not using it. So now we'll exit out of Google and move on to the next step. Now remember that shortcut I showed you before, Command and Q. So this next step is a little bit technical and it's probably one of the most technical things you'll do during this whole video. And that is clearing out the caches folder. So first of all, we will make sure that we've clicked on finder and we'll select that. And then we'll come up here to go. And then on the keyboard, we are actually gonna hold down option. And you can see when I hold down option, the library folder will actually appear out of nowhere. So keep holding down the option key and then click on library. And let me just change this view, make it a little bit easier to see. Now what we'll do first of all is we'll actually locate the caches folder. Now before you do anything else, I'll just quickly explain what the library section is. So this essentially holds all of the files on your computer. So you wanna be really careful in this area and you wanna follow my instructions exactly. Otherwise you may end up deleting some folders or some files that you don't want to. Again, if you have a time machine backup, it's really not a big deal. So moving forward, we're going to go into caches and we're actually going to double click the caches folder. 
And as you can see up here, we are inside the caches folder. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna just select everything inside the caches folder, and we're going to delete it all. Remember, you need to select everything inside the caches folder. You don't want to select the caches folder itself. So to clear out the caches folder, we're just going to single click on one of these folders, doesn't matter which one. And then on the keyboard, we're going to hold down the command key and we're gonna press the A button. And that is essentially just going to highlight everything inside the caches folder. And then what you can either do is you, if you wanna use the keyboard shortcut, you can hold down command and delete, or you can come here to the settings icon and you can click the move to bin button. Now the caches folder essentially just holds temporary files for some of the applications that you use. It really is just a dumping ground for programs to just store temporary folders and files. Over time, this particular caches folder can build up and it can get quite clunky. So it's a good idea every year or two years to come in and just empty it out and clean it out so that it can rebuild itself more efficiently. So we'll go back out of the caches folder and there are a few more folders that you'll want to go into and then delete everything inside them. The first one is the cookies folder, which is here. So we'll go inside this, we'll select everything, command delete, we'll delete all of that. The next folder is input methods. So we'll scroll down to input methods. Nothing in there, that's good, that's clear. And now the next one is launch daemons. Now a lot of people don't actually have this particular folder. Uh, I don't, which is good, we can move on. And the last one is saved application state. Saved application state, here we go. So again, select one of them, command A, and we will just delete all of that. Now I'll put up a little piece of information on the screen now, which essentially gives you a little bit of background information about these folders and their purpose. So if you are interested in reading that, just pause the video and give it a quick read. Now, once we have gone into those folders and removed everything inside those folders, we'll close down Finder, we'll go into the bin, and we will empty the bin. Now that's gonna delete everything that we've just moved into the bin, and I've actually had some people find 40 to 50,000 different files that have ended up being deleted out of the caches folder. Mine was pretty good, it was only about five or 6,000, but comment below and tell me how many folders and files you guys had when you emptied your bin. By the way, if you want to download some cool animations like that one, check out the createdlabs.com website where we have a whole bunch of transitions, color corrections, and YouTube animations available for download. So at this point, we're probably about halfway through the entire process and you may actually be noticing that your computer is a little bit faster. If not, I promise when we do the next few steps and then you restart, you definitely will notice a difference. Now in this section, we're gonna talk about some good practices that you should be using to maximize the performance of your Mac. So the first one is don't use the icon view in Finder. So if we go into the Finder, and then let's say we go to documents or even downloads. You want to use the list view and you don't want to use the icon view because what the icon view does is if you've got a lot of videos or photos there, it's going to have to generate the thumbnail for every single file or document that you have there. If you're just using file view, it doesn't really need to do that. You can see it's very, very small here and it's going to give you a little bit of a boost to your performance. Next, we're gonna go into the system preferences and we're just gonna tweak a few settings. So firstly, we'll go into users and groups and then we'll select your particular user account and then we'll come up here to login items. And this is where you're gonna actually want to delete things here that you don't use. Now your login items are programs that start up when you turn your Mac on. So if I were to shut my Mac down and then turn it back on, all of these programs here are what would automatically launch. Now, some people might have 10, 15, 20 programs here. And what that means is that every time you turn your Mac on, your computer's gonna have to wait until all of these background things are started up. 
So for me personally, I actually haven't done this for ages and you can see a lot of these particular programs actually aren't even on the computer anymore. So we can come in here and we can actually clear these out. So uTorrent, I don't use that. So we can highlight it and we can delete it. Magnet, I don't use that. Sync, I do. BitTorrent, again, don't use that. Skype, I don't use that at all. And you can see I don't even have it on the computer anymore. So we'll delete that. And I think Magnet deleted, so I'll delete that a second time. There we go. So once you've deleted your login items, we can go back and we're gonna go into general. We are going to make sure automatically hide and show the menu bar is not selected. We're gonna make sure that show scroll bars is selected to always. And if you really wanna squeeze every single drop of performance out of your computer, you can also select font smoothing and untick that. But for me personally, these last two settings don't do anything, so I'm actually going to set them back to what they were before. So if we go back out of the general pane and we go into dock, we're gonna make sure that magnification is turned off. We're going to minimize windows using a scale effect. We're gonna turn animate opening applications off and we're going to turn off automatically hide and show the dock. So you want your settings to mimic mine. No magnification, scale effect, no minimize windows, and no animate opening applications. So essentially all this is gonna do is it's just gonna decrease the actual animation on your screen when you're using the operating system. And really the only pro of having these settings enabled is your operating system just looks a little bit snazzier. So for example, if we open up Safari, you can see with the scale effect, it's pretty ugly. It's not exactly the most attractive way of opening a program. But if we change this back to Genie, it's a little bit nicer. You can see it has that animation when it opens up and closes down. Now, if that's important to you, you can of course keep it, but just remember that that simple animation of opening it up with the Genie effect is using up system resources. So we'll close down system preferences and move on to the next step, which is a free program called Malwarebytes. Now this video isn't sponsored, nothing like that. You don't have to pay for Malwarebytes either. I've been using it since about 2014. And last time I checked, if you actually called up Apple and reported a small computer or that you had some kind of virus or malware, they actually recommend that you use Malwarebytes to remove it from your computer. So I'll show you what Malwarebytes does, but first of all, we'll have to download it. So if we open up your internet browser, doesn't matter which one, we're gonna go to Malwarebytes, bytes is B-Y-T-E-S dot com, and you can go slash Mac if you want. We're actually just going to do a free download. And we're going to allow, that's gonna download. Now you see there is a paid version. I've never used this. The free version is all we need. If you want to upgrade to the paid one, if you really like it, all power to you. But in six years, I've never needed to do that. So next we're going to install Malwarebytes. Continue, continue, continue. And we're going to agree. I don't think anyone ever reads the license on these things. We're gonna select the Macintosh hard drive, and continue, install, enter your password, close, move to bin, that's just for the installer. And we're gonna open it up. If it doesn't open up automatically, you can just press command space on the keyboard. You can search for it if you can spell it correctly, unlike me. But we've already got it open here. Uh, you can just click allow or don't allow to this, it doesn't really matter. So we'll go get started. We're using a personal computer. We're going to use Malwarebytes free. You don't need to enter your email either. We're just gonna open it for free. Now, what you might have to do, depending on your security preferences, is you're actually going to need to give Malwarebytes access to your computer. So we will open preferences, and we're gonna to go to security and privacy, the privacy tab, 
We're going to come down here to full disk access. We're going to unlock so we can make some changes. Enter your password, unlock. And we're going to give Malwarebytes access to the disk. This doesn't mean it's going to install anything. It's just allowing Malwarebytes to scan your system for potential malware or viruses and things like that. So once we've enabled it, we're going to exit system preferences. We're going to continue on with this. Next, next, done. And we're just going to scan. Now, like I said before, this isn't going to actually change or do anything on your computer. It's just going to scan all of the files and look for things that it might class as malicious, such as some malware from a website or some kind of virus or things like that. So you can see here it scanned all of the items on my computer, which was 11,880, and it didn't detect any threats or anything like that. So you can see here, threats include malware, viruses, and anything that can harm your computer or invade your privacy. PUPs, potentially unwanted programs. So say for example, if you've downloaded a program off the internet and when you're installing it, it asks you to download and install all these other different programs. Sometimes that will happen. This is gonna scan your computer for that kind of stuff and give you the option to remove it. Now, as you can see here, there's nothing bad on my computer. If it did find some stuff, then it will give you the option to actually remove that. And you can go ahead and remove those unwanted files or programs off your computer. So now we're gonna click done and we're just going to quit Malwarebytes. Remember, Command Q on the keyboard. We'll shut all of this other stuff down, Command Q. Or you can just uninstall Malwarebytes. It really doesn't matter. You don't really need it at this point any longer. Okay, now at this point, what I'm gonna get you to do is actually turn your computer off and then turn it back on, so restart it. I want you just to spend a few minutes going through, browsing the web, opening up some programs and some files, and I just want you to see if the speed and the performance of your Mac has noticeably improved. If it has improved, that's great. You probably don't need to watch the rest of the video, although I would still recommend it, but if it is still a little bit slow or a little bit sluggish, these next steps will hopefully do the trick. So the first thing we can do is open up Disk Utility. Now there's two ways to do this. Number one, using those really cool shortcuts we found out about before, so Command Space, we can search for Disk Utility, and we can open it up that way. By the way, another way you can access this is by going to the Finder, and then Applications, and if we scroll right down the very bottom of Applications, Utilities, and Disk Utility, there it is. So that's the other way you can open it up. Now, Disk Utility essentially allows you to see the internal hard drives of your Mac and also anything external that is plugged in like an external USB or an external hard drive. Now you can see under the internal section, I have two entries here, the Macintosh HD and the Macintosh HD-Data. Now this is going to be the actual hard drive itself and this is actually split it into two. So this one here, you can see it's only used about 11 gigabytes. So this is gonna be the actual operating system and the recovery partition. And then the Macintosh HD slash data, that is going to be, you can see the 85 gigabytes. So this is gonna be all of my user files, my movies, my folders, my pictures, etc. Now, Disk Utility is a really cool tool because it actually allows you to do first aid. Now, I generally recommend not to do this step unless you're really facing some serious issues with the Mac. So if you've done all the previous steps and it's still super slow or some files are giving you weird error messages, you can actually select your data hard drive and you can click on first aid and then you can actually run first aid. And essentially what that does is it's going to inspect your hard drive, it's gonna inspect the files and the actual way the drive is set up itself and it's gonna to attempt to identify and then fix any errors. So we'll click the run button and we'll let first aid do its thing. Once first aid has finished running, you'll get this dialog box and this is gonna give you some details on what's happened. So you can see here that the operation has been successful, there's no issues, you'll see a nice big green tick here, which is good. Now, if it's not successful, it'll actually give you some more information here, and you can use that information and either comment it below and someone here or myself can try and help you, or you can Google it and there should be some more information out there somewhere. 
But for me personally, mine was fine. So I'm going to click done and then I'm going to exit disk utility. Now this next part is going to actually involve shutting the computer down again. So what I'll get you to do is to shut down the computer and then what you'll do is when it's completely turned off, hold down the shift key, press the power button to turn it on and continue holding the shift key for about 10 to 15 seconds. This is going to reboot the Mac into what's called safe mode. Now safe mode is essentially booting the Mac up as normal, but it's got a lot of things disabled. So a lot of the visual elements will be disabled, which means you might see some weird static lines or some blurriness on the screen. That's totally fine. And it's also going to disable some processes and extensions. So your overall experience may be a little bit weird, but safe mode is very good because it runs some additional checks and tests by default to try and resolve or fix any issues. So if you've got a particular program that's not responding properly, or sometimes if your Mac is running really slowly, it's due to some kind of errant process or task, safe mode may actually be able to fix it. Now, sometimes you can actually see a little red safe mode text in one of the corners, it may not always pop up, but it's pretty easy to tell when you're in safe mode. I will also link a Apple support article here going into safe mode a little bit more in depth that you can read if you're stuck. Now, all you need to do in safe mode is just spend five minutes going through the computer. So again, open up some programs, some files, do some web browsing, and then you want to shut the computer down and then turn it back on again. But this time when you turn it on, you just want to turn it on normally. You don't want to hold down any buttons. And this is going to bring us to our final fix. And that is actually re-indexing Spotlight. So you've obviously seen me use Spotlight throughout this particular video a lot. And it essentially, like the name suggests, allows you to search everything on your Mac. So the way this occurs is your Mac actually builds an index of all of your files. Think of it as some kind of huge intricate tree with everything linked together and laid out in an orderly manner. And what can sometimes happen over the years is that this particular index or this tree can become a little bit convoluted or corrupted and a little bit all over the place. So what it may sometimes need is to be re-indexed or to essentially be regrown to keep with the tree terminology. So first of all, we'll open up the terminal program. So we'll search for terminal. We will open that up. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to type in a simple command here that's going to help us re-index Spotlight. Now I'll have this command in the description of this video, so you can just copy and paste it. But the command is sudo, S-U-D-O, space, M-D-U-T-I-L, space, dash capital E space forward slash and then we're going to hit the return key and we're actually going to enter our user password now just bear in mind when you do enter your user password it won't actually pop up uh, that's fine you'll see when I do it now so I'm going to type my password you see it didn't pop up but then I'm just going to press the return key and you will see that indexing is enabled now this process is going to happen in the background, so you won't actually notice anything happening out of the ordinary. And what I recommend doing is just using your Mac as you would normally for a few hours, or if you just wanna let it sit there turned on and just doing its thing, because sometimes depending on how many files you have on the computer, it can take a few hours to re-index Spotlight. Now after a couple of hours, what you wanna do is you want to come back and you want to restart the computer and that is it. You should hopefully have a really quick, really speedy Mac that is a lot faster than it was about 15 minutes ago. Now, if you are worried about the re-index, it's not gonna be continually re-indexing, it's just a one-time thing. So if you put that command in, it's gonna re-index once and that's it. Now, if you are still having issues with your Mac, the most likely culprit is going to actually be your operating system itself it's more than likely corrupted and needs to be completely reinstalled. Now I'll be continuously checking back on this video to make sure it's up to date. And I'll also include follow-up videos and additional steps you can take in the comment section and also in the video description. So make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay notified for all of those things. And if you are watching this video sometime in the future, 
do check the comment section and do check the description because I'll update it as often as I can. So that's it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, all the instructions on this video can be found on the Created Labs website if you prefer to go through an article step by step instead of following along with a video. Again, I'll have a few little bonus steps on that article, so definitely do check it out. But apart from that, thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in the next one.